look at the AP zero, and this is what we call a two-sided AP. It extends to infinity on both sides. Minus a minus two. Now, since it's a two-sided infinite AP, we can actually look at the integer number line. You look at zero, a, two a, and so on. And this goes on for all the multiples of a, including the negative multiples. And what we want to do now is find b on this number line with respect to this ap. What does that mean? Hello, everyone. Welcome to another video by Jinta.com. I'm Rajdeep Ghosh. Today's video will be on Euclid's division algorithm. The problem that we'll center around will be IMO 1959p1. Um, this will be part of a series that I will be covering. Um, it will it will comprise of all topics that fall under the Olympiad and ICICMI entrance syllabus, and I'll slowly try to cover the entire thing, entire course. Euclid's division algorithm. Why do we use it, and why does it work? Perhaps not a proof, but a sketch, or at least the idea. All of it follows a short comment on the naturality of Euclid's division lemma. Uh, obviously, there's a relevant problem that we'll be discussing. It is IMO 1959. The first IMO that was ever conducted, we'll be talking about the first problem from that contest. As usual, there's a challenge problem for the viewers. And the incentives for the best comments to the, to the challenge problem is uh, a mention in the next video. And the best responders over a month will be considered for the Ramanujan Scholarship at jinta.com. To uh, read more about the Ramanujan Scholarship, feel free to pause here and read about it. Problem says that the, it, it asks us to prove that the fraction 21n plus 4 by 40, 14n plus 3 is irreducible for every natural number n. For those of you who don't know what irreducible means, we call a fraction irreducible if the GCD, the greatest common divisor of the numerator and the denominator, which in these cases are what I've written down, is 1. This is what it means for a fraction to be irreducible. It means that the numerator and the denominator do not share any common factors and uh, you cannot reduce them down to a smaller fraction. By smaller, we mean a fraction with a lower numerator and denominators. We look at Euclid's division lemma. The issue with calling it a lemma or a theorem is that it clouds how natural the idea behind it is. I try to keep this discussion short but I'll try to get across all the ideas that go behind this. What Euclid's division lemma states is that I have, if I have two integers a, b, then I can find q and r element of z are necessarily being positive, non-negative rather, element of z such that b is equal to a q plus r. This is what Euclid's division lemma states. But the idea is far more transparent than this. Consider this a proof, perhaps. Look at the AP, 0. And this is what we call a two-sided AP. It extends to infinity on both sides. Minus A, minus 2. Now, since it's a two-sided infinite AP, we can actually look at the integer number line. You look at 0, A, 2A, and so on. And this goes on for all the multiples of a, including the negative multiples. And what we want to do now is find b on this number line with respect to this ap. What does that mean? I would like to track b and we'll keep references as they are members of this ap. What are the possibilities? Either b is an exact member of this, of this ap. So what we have is b equals k. And this is not exactly one case, it's mostly more like a subcase, but it's a special subcase. What this means is that a divides b. b is a multiple of a. If not, we can claim very naturally that it lies between two multiples of it. If not a multiple, it will obviously lie between two multiples because you know b is a finite number and this a p goes on till infinity. We can find a we can find a k or let's say q such that b lies between q a and q, q plus 1 a. Now, we would also like to track b. So what we say, what we say that b is, as it, uh, is at a distance r from the qth multiple of a. And now we've successfully tracked b. 
So we say B is equal to QA plus R. And that's it. That's the division lemma. The, the, the division lemma just states that if you take any AP, you can track every single number, every single integer with respect to this AP. That's it. That's a remarkably simple thing. Uh, we'll state a corollary of just general number theory um, that goes into the proof of Euclid's division algorithm. If D divides A and D divides B for some integers D, A and B, then D must divide their difference. Why is that? If D divides A, then A must be some multiple of D, say K1 D. If D divides B, then B must be some multiple of the uh, D, say K2 D. And what is A minus B? A minus B is equal to K1 minus K2 whole multiplied by D. And that implies that D divides A minus B. Not all that remarkable, but still very useful. What this says, now, now we would like to come to Euclid's division algorithm. Why do we care about this? And at least in the context of our problem, we would like to find the GCD of two numbers who, who we have no idea what they look like in the general case. We can pick an n, some n, and talk about and calculate it and calculate the GCD by hand, but that's not useful because you want to prove it for all n. So we want an we want an efficient way to calculate the GCD of twelve two numbers. Here's a nice fact. Now we all know that uh, the GCD is the greatest common divisor. So like this, if we take if we have a D, um, if we have a D that divides both A and B, and we look at this list of these common divisors. So obviously one will be here and then, you know, some D, some L, and this goes on. If you look at the entire set and look at the maximum, that's what the GCD is, right? Now, because of the fact that we've proved, we can actually say something fun. that The GCD of A, A and B is actually the same as the GCD of A and B minus A. We're assuming that B is greater than A. If A is greater than B, we can just write A minus B instead of uh, A minus B comma B instead of A comma B minus A. And this follows directly from the fact that we proved here. Since the GCD divides both A and B, the GCD will in fact divide A and B minus A. And it will be the greatest common divisor. And this is the basis of Euclid's division algorithm. We want to look at smaller and smaller numbers, we'll write so that till a point we'll come to so small numbers so small that we can immediately declare the the GCD, right? So what we'll do is we'll keep reducing, we'll keep cutting off multiples of a. So we'll start with b minus a, then we look at b minus two a. We'll keep doing this until the number that we're left with will come to a, such a b minus k a that if you take off one more a, you'll actually be getting a negative number. So that b minus k is actually less than a. And this reminds us suspiciously of the division lemma. What does the division lemma tell us? That if we have B and A, then I can write B as QA plus R. And R is strictly less than A. So what we have is that we can actually find such a Q such that uh, B minus QA is less than A. And this is what we'll do. We'll constantly keep doing this. We'll start with GCD A, B. Then we'll make this into... GCD A minus A comma B minus QA, which is GCD A R. So what we've done is gone from GCD or calculating the GCD of A comma B to calculating the GCD of A and R, which is a easier problem because the numbers that we're dealing with are smaller. We started with B greater than A, now we now we've come to A greater than R. But the thing is, we can keep doing this. Now we can calculate. The GCD of A and R the same way we can do GCD A minus R so on, and then GCD A minus 2R and we can keep continuing in this way till the number uh, till A minus you know DR whatever is actually less than R and then we'll keep doing this process. Clearly the process ends and at some point we'll be left with a zero. We'll be left with a zero, some A dash zero. So what we'll have is we'll, we'll keep doing this process and since equality is everywhere, and this finally happens, since zero is divisible by everything, the GCD is just A dash. 
this is the Euclid's division algorithm. We keep subtracting numbers till we actually get to a simple enough case that we can declare the GCD directly. Coming to the problem, coming to the problem, uh, we want to calculate the GCD of 21n plus 4 and 14n plus 3. What we just learned from the division algorithm is we look at 21n plus 4 and we'll try to subtract the most numbers of 14n plus 3 as possible. We can't do more than 2 because in that case it'll just exceed it, so we'll just take 1. What's the what's the remainder? The remainder is 7n plus 1. Now we'll take the GCD of these two uh, numbers. We'll write 14n plus 3 and now we can actually take two 7n plus 1s. What we are left with is a 1. The remainder is 1. Now we'll just calculate the GCD of 7n plus 1 and 1. But the thing is, we can just take 7n plus 1 once and get a 0 remainder. So what we have is that the GCD is 1. And we're done. We've shown that the GCD of 21n plus 4 and 14n plus 3 is 1 no matter what value of n you choose. And that's it. We're done. And we'll try to recap all the underlying ideas. Euclid's division lemma is a very natural consequence of the additive structure of integers. This is a slightly vague statement. Let's not uh, focus on here. The basic idea is that given any two-sided infinite AP, we'll take any AP, which is which extends on both sides, and then any integer must fall either on or in between elements of the AP. Euclid's division algorithm is an efficient way to calculate the GCD of two numbers without having to manually check all the divisors, which is what a naive algorithm would be. You'll just check, check all the common divisors and look at the maximum of that set. But the division algorithm that Euclid devised is actually far more efficient. It stems naturally from a basic number theoretic fact, which is that D divides A and D divides B implies D divides A minus B. We look at smaller and smaller numbers, and the division lemma guarantees us that we can keep doing this. In the next video in the series on number theory, we will extract the very useful Bezout's theorem as yet another natural extension of the division algorithm. It will be lovely, I guarantee you. Finally, here's the challenge problem for all your avid, all your avid viewers. It is extremely related to what we've done today in this video, and I hope to see good responses in the comments. Thank you so much.